he really is one of the last great sort of Hollywood draw cards that you can put him in a film and you know you're going to get bums on seats. Hey everyone, Bruce from What's Popping and we're going to be sharing our thoughts on Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Now in a month where it does feel like the entire film industry is looking to three blockbusters in particular for a bit of guidance on where to move next, Mission Impossible is a great start to that trio. The other two of course being the, the two films making up Barbenheimer, the Barbie and Oppenheimer movies which are coming out on the same day. I will be doing reviews for those, so if you aren't subscribed, hit the subscribe button and you can check those out as soon as they're out as well. But the Mission Impossible franchise has been something that's really kind of brings audiences back time and time again, and this movie is no exception. Tom Cruise, off the back of Top Gun Maverick, is back, he is saving movies, he is doing all of the things we expect from Ethan Hunt at his age. He's gone into his 60s now and he is still bringing the action, bringing the hype. And that is something that I think they have done really well with this film. Before you even sit down in the cinema, they have marketed this movie so well that you know what kind of beats are going to be hit. You know some of the stunts, you've seen some of the featurettes if you're uh, Tom Cruise or a action film fanatic you've seen some of those moments and you want to see them how they're going to play out on the big screen in IMAX and I've got to tell you they do not disappoint I think that Tom Cruise is kind of the core that is holding this movie together and you can see that he lifts the actors around him in pretty much every scene he's in but particularly the action sequences you you get the feeling that actors who work on a project with Tom Cruise feel that they have to lift their own game in terms of physicality and doing their own stunts and that is something that helps to ground the action in so many beautiful 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 ways because my biggest concern going to this film being the seventh installment in a franchise is how do you keep things fresh how do you avoid everything feeling like a cliche and I was sitting there watching this and, and seeing them hit the same beats that you see hit in other Mission Impossible movies and other spy espionage movies and thinking to myself why am I not grimacing at this why am I not cringing and going oh that's cliche they've just shoehorned that line in and I think ultimately the answer to that question is they really really care about this film and they have not slacked off in a single one of the aspects of filmmaking throughout this feature. It is a ride from beginning to end with something for everybody to enjoy whether you are a movie buff or a casual movie go there's going to be something for you to enjoy and something for you to appreciate in this film and the fact that it is a franchise that hasn't seen diminishing returns over time is clearly because these guys know how to make movies there isn't a single aspect of the filmmaking process that has been overlooked and care has been taken to make sure that each sequence has had equal care put into it and you really feel that from the opening sequence of this film you feel the tension you feel that the the director wants you to feel a certain way and i felt particularly claustrophobic there's a submarine sequence going on and i i really felt that danger and that that fear that the crew might have been feeling on that submarine at the same time they take you to these wide open set pieces where there's these long action running shots i mean it's a running joke of tom cruise being the running man in movies of course there's a tracking shot of tom cruise running through the streets and you have these beautiful long shots that are well choreographed and well maintained but at the same time you've got these really gritty action sequences that take place in these corridors and there's scrappy fighting and you're not quite sure how how Ethan's going to get out of the situation and that helps to ground the action you of course know from the the media and the promo work that these actors are doing a lot of the work themselves so you're kind of watching for that and trying to see what's going on but at the same time because it is kind of limited by what is physically possible and they're not relying too much on CGI that you feel the tension you feel the stakes which I have not felt in a lot of movies of this nature for the last while I mean I don't like to compare a movie like this to something like the Fast and Furious but if you were to go shot for shot they both had these sequences in Italy, these car chase sequences. And the sequence in this is just miles and leagues beyond what we see in Fast and Furious because there is an element of danger. There's an element of this being possible. You as the audience look at this and go, oof, that hit really hard. That seems real. That, 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 and, and it draws you into the excitement. It draws you into the moment. Particularly in that sequence that I really enjoyed. I mean, the, the chemistry between Tom Cruise and Hayley Atwell is, is on point. They are a great duo to see on the screen. I know she was a new addition for this film and I think she worked absolutely brilliantly in her role. But the, there's this great sequence where one takes control and the next takes control. And it's very clear that Ethan is not in control of what's going on on screen. And he admits as much. He's like, I don't know what I'm doing here. This is, this is crazy. We're just going to get out of the situation. And there's a good mix of, scenes where Ethan is clearly in control he's in his element he's planned things out but he is working against an enemy who may be one or two steps ahead of him those sequences are there but there are equally as many scenes where he's not quite sure how he's going to get out of it and what works so well in this film is the fact that of course there are lucky moments there's these moments you go oh that was that was a pretty lucky moment there good thing that thing happened oh wow 
that car bribes just at the right moment. Wow, he jumped off that bridge as it was about to collapse. Those moments are there, but they're sprinkled throughout the movie in a way that feels organic that you know a person might be that lucky if fate were on their side and things were going from one scene to the next i think something else to point out in this film is the casting i never in a million years would have thought to cast palm clementy from guardians of the galaxy as a villain and she doesn't have a lot of lines in this but she is an imposing figure she is really there in all the scenes she's in she is hard she is gritty she is someone to take kind of seriously she does kind of feel very similar to a character that you would experience in the John Wick universe. I do kind of see that maybe inspiration blending across and bleeding across a little bit from there. But a great character. Thoroughly enjoyed her on screen. I think that the idea of the villain being this entity that is AI generated and maybe one step ahead is something that a lot of people will resonate with and a, a genuine fear that a lot of us could have. I think there has been this play on AI being a factor and something dangerous. We've had fear, you know, fear mongering in films like iRobot, which have shown that humans fear of kind of creating something that gets out of control that it ends up taking, ends up taking over our lives. I think that's something that's going to resonate with audiences very, very well now because it's something that's in the social zeitgeist. We're all far more acutely aware of AI technologies with things like chat GPT out there and all these different systems. The idea of this happening is quite plausible and, and quite frightening. There's a really cool nuclear subplot which I found hysterical because of course there's been a bit of controversy with the Mission Impossible movie and Oppenheimer coming out and one knocking the other out of IMAX. And something that I was particularly excited about is the fact that uh, a lot of this film was shot in South Africa. I am of course a South African so I was excited to see some of the scenes I don't think they were in this movie. I think that they're probably going to be predominantly in part two. There were a few shots that I thought could have happened in this place or, or another uh, throughout South Africa but of course we're going to see part two still and with that being said the movie, despite being a part one, and I, I, I do worry about this becoming a bit of a, a trope in Hollywood and something that they sort of get on the bandwagon and becomes a bit of a trend. I hope that's not the case. This whole part one, part two vibe, we are seeing it more and more. We did have that period in like the 2010s with the Twilight movies and Harry Potter and all of them doing this, this dual finale. I hope that doesn't catch on. But this movie, despite being a part one, does end in a pretty satisfying place. You do get a conclusion. You feel that something has transpired in the film. And I'm ready for the next part. I'm super keen to see it. But I do feel like there was a natural conclusion to the ending of this film. So the fact that it might be a little bit delayed by um, them having to delay filming for Tom Cruise to do promo for Top Gun Maverick a little while back. You know, you're not going to leave there and go, damn, this is, I, I, sh I just wasted two and a half, three hours of my life. And I don't have a conclusion. You do get a decent conclusion at the end of this film. It's satisfying enough that you can take something away from it. Go talk to your friends about it. Talk about what a fun time you had at the cinema. This is one of the first times in, in such a long time that I heard gasps in the audience when things went wrong or, or a scene where, where Tom does an insane stunt. We had a really great moment there with this just complete silence. And the sound design and soundtrack throughout this film was absolutely incredible. Obviously the soundtrack being inspired by the original Mission Impossible theme that is played throughout, but it ebbs and flows in this really, really goosebump inducing way, particularly during the, the action and the fight sequences and the car chases. But you have this moment where he does that stunt, you have silence, and during that moment of silence, I, I heard gasps in the cinema, and it's been so long since I've heard a full cinema actually react to a character on screen in that way. And I think it all comes back to the film being so, so very well grounded. It, it's full of a cast that have great chemistry with each other. There's some old hits for old Mission Impossible fans. There's some new moments there for new fans like me who are entering this franchise for the first time. And it makes me want to go back and watch all the other Mission Impossible films because there is something about Tom Cruise leading a cast through an action sequence festival that just makes you want to watch more of him on screen and he really is one of the last great sort of hollywood draw cards that you can play him in a film and you know you're going to get bums on seats but anyways guys what did you think about mission impossible dead reckoning part one let me know in the comments down below what your favorite mission impossible films are i'd love to see your rankings of them so i can get some information about which one i should start watching next because it's going to be a while until part two comes out and i gotta catch me up on some mission impossible let me know what you guys think in the comments down below as always and i can't wait to see all of you guys in the next video.